There's not a lot of games on the Dreamcast console that I got into, but this one was really good. This could be maybe the best Spawn game ever. So this is Spawn in the Demon's Hand on the Dreamcast. It was also an arcade game back in the day. So we're going to play some multiplayer. I'll team up with uh, the Vindicator and I'm going to use uh, the boss Gatekeeper. It's one of the uh, many unlockable characters you can get in this game. Alright, so uh, you have the option of changing the difficulty and also the amount of time each match lasts. So I did change it to like 30 minutes for the entire stage because sometimes I want to take a long time and kind of just enjoy everything. But uh, it really doesn't take you more than maybe a minute or two to kill each boss. Uh, so that's the end of the first one. Yeah, so um, as you can see his uh, upper body got destroyed. So you're going to see a lot of that with many ways of dying in this game. Either from characters uh, primary attacks or weapons like explosives or bladed weapons. So yeah, the gatekeeper is one of the uh, hidden bosses at the end of the game. And uh, he's really overpowered. He runs really fast. He has a very high jump. He also has some very strong moves like that rocket launcher that takes no energy to use really. Unlike other characters that do require health to use some specific special moves. He has that uh, flaming ability that actually locks onto your location, but I'm not sure if it's limited in range. Maybe it is. But anyways, so he also has a melee attack which does two hits. And you can also juggle off that melee attack with that dashing strike. On the Dreamcast version, it does support up to four player split screen local multiplayer, but I never got a chance to try that out. Most of the time when I play this game, I'm playing solo with a CPU teammate. And if you try to play the single player mode by yourself, at a certain point after a few stages, the game kind of tells you that it's more fun with other players and it kind of cuts you off there. So in a way you're forced to play with a CPU teammate to continue on to the final levels of the game. Yeah, kind of strange. Anyways, so yeah, how this game works is there's a boss and there's a couple of smaller enemies that annoy the heck out of you. So all you gotta do is deplete the boss's health and they normally have more health than you. Even if you're using the same character as the enemy on that stage, they still have more health than you because they are considered the boss of the stage so they need to last longer whereas you will die like maybe one or two hits <laughs> it's ridiculous so yeah you're gonna die a lot in this game and respawn very often so they have these boxes here you can uh, kind of destroy and they have these uh, weapon crates that will unlock uh, specific weapons like melee weapons or even uh, throwable items and also firearms for certain characters in the game all right so this is Saigor Although I still jump really high, like much higher than Saigor. Yeah, like maybe, what, two times higher than him? Yeah. Look at that, one hit. That's okay, we'll respawn, we'll dash in, and wow, the upper torso got completely destroyed. That's awesome. So that only happens at the end of their life bar. This is another game that I thought was really good and very unique for its time, and it's only been available on uh, the Dreamcast for a very long time. So I thought this would be a good time to bring up this game and give it some more attention because I think this game is worthy of a remaster or even just a release on more recent platforms right now like Xbox One, Xbox Series X, uh, PS4, PS5 and Steam. I mean just look at the gameplay. It's very simple, very easy to learn and it's very fun. It's chaotic at times but I mean that's part of the enjoyment. Let me try to get this boss into the lava pit. Okay, he's on the top railing. I missed. Oh, uh, let's try again. Got him. And there he goes. Yep. Right into the lava pit down below. That's actually an instant kill. But if you do that on the later levels of the game, like on certain bosses, they don't die. They just respawn infinitely until you deplete all their life. Alright, so this is overkill. This dude is massive. Yeah, some bosses in this game are huge. Like, from this perspective, you might think, okay, they kind of look big, but when you use them in your perspective, they take up so much of the screen. <laughs> Especially um, that brown violator, um, I forgot what his name is. Is it Vindicator or, or something or Vaporizer? I don't know. It's like the brown one that uh, breathes uh, purple gas. That one takes up so much of your screen, you can barely see where you're walking. And in some stages where you have like small caves, 
it's kind of hard to maneuver in the cave areas or very small crevices with that huge character. <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy game. It's kind of silly, but I mean, it's just, it's humorous in a way, but it's still fun. It's very easy to get into. I mean, there's not too many controls. There's run with a the joystick. There's jump, attack, and switch weapons. That's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Also, I noticed something. When you fight the boss versions of these characters, they tend to have, um, I think, better attributes on their special attacks. Because I noticed uh, the Vindicator that I use, when I actually control that character, I don't get that much uh, range or um, confirmed hits with the lightning strike from above compared to when the CPU fights me with that character. Okay, in simple English, I'll just say this. It seems like the boss versions that is controlled by the CPU in these boss modes tends to be better in some ways. Like, for example, that lightning strike hits me almost all the time and I cannot dodge it from the CPU. But when I use that same character and use the same move, it tends to miss so many times. It's kind of weird. So I guess in a way, they give the boss version of the CPU uh, a bit better attributes just to make them a little bit tougher when you actually have a teammate with you. So maybe that's why. I mean, that's typically what they do in fighting games also when you use the boss version of a character. It's nerfed down a little bit, but the actual one controlled by the CPU tends to be stronger in different ways. Like they have more damage, more health, uh, health regeneration, or even have like better frame data. So, all right. So next one is uh, Black Brimstone. All right. Let's see if I can find him. Yeah, Black Brimstone. He should be somewhere. There you are. Whoa, dude, I tried to get that rocket. It just didn't work. And I'm getting shot in the back. Trying to dodge his uh, triple fireballs. Yo, I hit him in the face with that. It didn't even like stop his animation. He must have like uh, super armor or something. Yeah, super armor in fighting games works like this. The enemy will absorb at least one hit and not be uh, hit out of the animation of what they're currently doing. They would need at least uh, two consecutive hits to actually break the animation of what they're doing. That's why they call it super armor. I remember that um, Juggernaut had that in X-Men Children of the Atom. And uh, uh, Hulk also had that in Marvel Superheroes. But yeah. God damn. <laughs> okay. It's a good thing to have a teammate, so it helps. Yeah, it makes things a little bit easier. Even though the game has a lot of characters to unlock, uh, the game also suffers from balance issues. Like some characters are just so bad in terms of their running speed, their range, and their attack patterns. They're just so bad, you just never want to use them. But of course, you can do like a four player low tier battle just for fun. But yeah, I mean, most of the other characters are pretty good. But I mean, these ones here are just pretty bad in general. So this is one of those uh, very large characters I was talking about earlier. This is Vaporizer. Uh, there's a few Violator-like characters in this game. I think there's like three of them. There's uh, these three. I think the fourth one is the one you can actually transform from the clown. Yeah, the actual Violator. But uh, yeah, this is another big one. And when you use this character, just like Overkill, like those two huge body characters, they take up a lot of your screen. You can't really see everything, but I mean, it's just fun. It's like, why not? So yeah. Uh, there's also those uh, low tiered characters, which you kind of do have to go through in the story mode to unlock specific characters. And some of those low tiered characters are frustrating to use where you're just hoping the CPU teammate does most of the damage because it is really hard. It's long, it's frustrating, and it's not that fun trying to beat some overpowered boss character using a low tiered zombie. It's just, it's not fun. <laughs> so yeah, those uh, single player runs I did were just pretty bad. They were rough on me. So anyways, uh, when all the characters were unlocked, I tried a bunch of them and uh, I do like the gatekeeper. I like a black brimstone. I like the standard brimstone. I'm not too fond of the spawn characters that use firearms because I think a few of them have that special ability to use their chains on the body but when you use the chains it'll actually deplete a small portion of your health just to use that ability and this passes over to certain characters that have the same thing like using a projectile with some characters 
will use up your own health bar in the same process. So if I was to use a spawn character, it would have to be Dark Ages spawn. I also think there is no way to block any attacks in this game. It doesn't appear to be. I think that's why they gave each character uh, invincible frames as they wake up from spawning and also uh, being knocked down. So I'm assuming that's why they have those invincible frames so they don't get attacked over and over and over as they get up. So I guess that's why. So anyways, we need to get rid of this uh, vacillator and then there we go. Wow, destroyed completely to pieces. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's move on to the next character. It is the gatekeeper boss. All right, boss attack mode. This dude looks cool, man. <laughs> nice. You're also going to notice that the game does have these uh, power-up orbs around the stages, like right there. There's yellow and red, there's a blue and green. So that basically just um, gives you a boost of speed, armor, strength, and health regeneration. We are almost through the arcade mode. I think there's like maybe uh, two or three more bosses, something like that. But god damn, the zombie blew my torso apart. Yeah, I think that was a shotgun. One has a shotgun and I think the other one has a machine gun, I believe. God damn. Yo, he took no damage. Did I just miss? Then he chopped off my head. <laughs> like what happened there? <laughs> that was weird. There we go, got the juggle. So yeah, you can juggle in the game. Yo, this, this, um, okay, that's not a zombie or skeleton. That's, uh, I think a spawn creature. Yeah, that's one of the worst characters in the game. God, try beating the game with that character. It's gonna take a long time. All right, uh, he's almost done, he's almost. And then, wow, I missed again. Yo, he did not have invincible frames. Like, that time already expired and then my rocket still missed him. Maybe I just have bad aim. God damn, <laughs> but his aim is always really good. Okay. Can my teammate like do his special attack? Oh god damn, I got destroyed. Oh jeez, his aim is really good compared to mine. Can my teammate... Okay, I'll do it myself. There we go. Finally, I got him with a rocket launcher at the very end. Damn. That boss is cool and is really fun to use also. Alright, so who is next? Angel Teneris. Oh, this girl is cheap. She is cheap. I'm telling you, she's worse than Black Brimstone, worse than Gatekeeper. What makes her so annoying is that she launches two bladed long range projectiles that will knock you down and can also launch two more to juggle you as you're bouncing off the floor so it'll kill you in four hits you cannot even dodge. But they also track you even if you jump. If you jump up over her, they turn around, go straight up and hit you out of the air. Ridiculous tracking. That's what makes this character so cheap and annoying. But here's the funny thing. When you use that character yourself and you use those bladed projectiles, they do not track crazy like that. And they're so weak. And you're like, oh my God, I thought I was getting a good character. I guess not. And oh my God, oh my God. Like that friendly fire is also a problem. Not only is it foggy, I can barely see the enemies. I gotta deal with this enemy that launches these tracking projectiles, but my teammate can also hit me. So I gotta like maybe just, you know, do the dashing strike upon wake up and hope it actually hits the boss. You know, sometimes I can't even see the icon saying boss. So I just like just dash into anything and it'll kill something. Um, whoa, I got hit in the back and then, oh, thank you. Thank God. Thank you. So. That lightning strike is really good. That's why I picked that character for my teammate. It's also very useful on the final boss, which I'll show you later on. All right, Dark Ages spawn, nice. So this is the one that spawns with that gigantic sword and I believe it'll kill you in two swipes and like finish you off right away. That's only because the player starts off with a low amount of health and the bosses have a large amount of health. All right, what I'll do is I'll try to have my teammate distract him and, oops, sorry about that friendly fire. <laughs> oh well, it happens. So maybe I can use my teammate as a bait or a distraction and I'll try to do the fire attack or launch a rocket at uh, Dark Ages spawn from a distance. 
and he's almost done almost and there we go I chopped off his head with the melee attack all right so uh, that's the end of stage 13 and uh, let's go on to the next one. Oh, the final boss Malvolgia. so this boss actually dies in one hit it's just you got to get pretty close to it to actually land that one hit but if you have a long range attack like a uh, machine gun a rocket launcher or even like the lightning strike that the vindicator does it's also effective and uh, yeah there we go that's it that is the end of spawn in the demon's hand on dreamcast